What's going on Minties? The Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition and today I'm going to do an overview of the Cable and X-Force Omnibus and talk about where it fits in and what it replaces. So please stay tuned. Okay so let's get this video started. As you can see I have the X-Force and Deadpool and X-Force Omnibus back there. So why is this here? Well technically this is actually X-Force Volume 3 despite of what the White Spine title tells you. Yes, so if you're a little OCD, the titles are not going to be the only thing that bother you about the spine. Just saying. But this book, this omnibus, takes place immediately after Volume 2 of X-Force, or what is called Deadpool and X-Force Omnibus. Okay, now let's look at the back. Here are all the covers and the contents of the book. And without the dust jacket, it's just the artwork. Uh, by the way, the cover is Cable number 16. And the original cover to Cable Number 16 by Steve Scrooge had that. There were two. There was the comic book uh, stores variant, which had the, the, or what is known as the direct market variant. By the way, this only has one cover. Um, and it had that foil looking stamp on the computer chip there. So the book kicks off with one of my favorite crossovers of all time. And that is with the New Warriors. And that's the Child's Play crossover. So the contents of the book are X-Force 32 to 43, Annual number 3, Cable 9 through 20, New Warriors 45 and 46, X-Factor 106, Excalibur 82, and Wolverine 85. And those latter ones are the events known as the Phalanx Covenant. The complete Phalanx Covenant is not included in here. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a page that tells you if you want the whole event, please go and buy the Phalanx Covenant oversized hardcover. So you have art here from Tony Daniel. Uh, and then eventually you have this gentleman right here that takes over Cable. And that is Steve Scross. And I absolutely love this dude's artwork. And apparently somebody else did because he went on to do storyboards for Hollywood. And he did the storyboard for a little movie called The Matrix. Uh, now, he's come back time to time to comic books. I think the last thing I saw him in is We Stand on Guard, or We Stand the Guard, which is the Brian K. Vaughn book. And here's Tony Daniels, or Antonio Daniels, who went on to do Spawn. And he did a little stint, this tiny little character from DC called Batman. So the guy blew up. Actually... If you were in the 90s, if you were an X-Man or X-Title artist, you were bound to go get a job somewhere. <laughs> Image seemed to have pulled everybody from that pool. And it's nice to see that these names are still around. Here's the late Mike Waringo. This is the annual X-Force number three. Um, by the way, a lot of this stuff has been previously collected in two of the Marvel premieres, X-Force Phalanx Covenant and X-Force Child's Play. And... Both of these had variant covers, so yeah. All the events in these books are now in this omnibus. And as far as, like, Cable, Cable Classics is also included in here. So, lots of stuff can now be upgraded to this omnibus. I love that they keep everything from the annuals in here. So you have Larry Stroman, pinup art, Steve Epting, uh, Boom Boom. I think she's still known as Boom Boom during this time, and eventually she became known as Meltdown. And here it is, the previously page in the Phalanx Covenant telling you to pick up that book. And yeah, this is kind of what the glossy computer chips look like. Um, now that I have this, it, may, it does put some thoughts into my head of doing a comprehensive reading order for X-Force. So if you want to see that, I have polls on Patreon every month as to what the next comprehensive reading order of comics I do is. So if you haven't joined our Patreon, please think about doing so. And here's this beautiful artwork by Tony Daniels with, usually his inker was Kevin Conrad. Uh, I love this time of X-Force. I love, love New Warriors. And the fact that yeah, I get excited every time that I see a New Warriors in oversized format. Fabian New CSL was just killing it during this time. Uh, here is the crossover event, Phalanx Covenant with x-factor ken lashley drew that and so does steve epting or actually that's the excalibur issue kicked off in x-factor moved on to wolverine and it wrapped up in 
cable, number 16. This is the one that they use for the cover. And the Phalanx Covenant was a pretty unique crossover event, as in some of the stuff had been laid out before Chris Claremont left. So a lot of the stuff they had to, Scott Lobdell and Fabian Iciesa had to kind of wrap up on their own, such as the missing Jean, Sarah Gray, Jean Gray's sister. By the way, if you heard me talk about Prosh in my Eve of Destruction X-Men Forever omnibus or oversized hardcover this is the character i was talking about this is kind of his first appearance and i'm not going to spoil who he is but it's pretty unique i thought uh here's wonderful artwork again by tony as you can tell i love this dude's artwork um, a lot of the artwork in the front was done by Derek robertson as far as the new warriors and of course steve scrose here on cable he had a very um interesting style it reminded me a lot of joe quesada but not as many use of darks or not inspired by Lucha, but man, look at that. That's awesome. Well, I've always loved that cover, but he doesn't do the inside. I think it's Terry Dotson that does. Yeah, Terry Dotson does the inside of this issue here. Now, where does all this take us? Well, this takes us right before each issue. Takes us right before Legion Quest. Or actually, this is part of Legion Quest. Uh, both of the X-Force and Cable issues lead us directly into the Age of Apocalypse. Now let's look at the extras here really quick. We have some pinup art that were original posters in Wizard Magazine. I remember that. That's Greg Capullo. Um, yes, so Age of Apocalypse. We don't have anything post-Age of Apocalypse as far as X-Force. We do have a lot of cable, but we don't have any of uh, Adam Polina's run on X-Force yet. So hopefully there will be a Volume 4, and they can call it whatever the hell they want to. They can call it Venom and X-Force. They can call it X-Force and X-Force. I don't care. As long as I get more X-Force in oversized format, they can call it whatever they want. So I'm good with the title changes as long as the content is what I need for my compre or <laughs> my chronological order of reading these books. And that is the content. Now let's look at that little eye in the bind. It's really nice. You can probably tell as I was flipping pages that it's <laughs> laying quite nicely. So much so that was, when I was flipping here, it, the book stayed laid down. And that's what you want to see in a book this size with nice sewn binding. Very nice. What you've come to expect from recent Marvel omnibuses. Here's that beautiful Derek Robertson artwork on New Warriors and his take. Oh, yeah. First appearance of Paige. Husk. Sam's sister. So, And that was the contents of the book. Let me know in the comments down below if you decided to pick it up or that you didn't even know what it was. So hopefully I was able to help some of you all out as to what is the Cable and X-Force Omnibus and where it fits in. Like I mentioned, I probably will put up the X-Force reading order in the Patreon poll. So if you haven't joined our Patreon, maybe think about doing so. We can also be found on Redbubble where we sell t-shirts with our logo and our stickers. And if you enjoyed the content of this video, please think about subscribing and hit that like button. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.